Um, okay, hi everyone. I am here with uh, Chinu Kala. She is the founder of Rubens Accessories, which was founded in 2014. It's a jewelry brand. And uh, from what I've got written over here, it has more than 2000 designs by uh, artisans all over India. And the entire one of the aims of this company was to make jewelry more affordable. Uh, Chinuji, the first thing which I want to jump into straight away is, is this true that apparently you left home at the age of 15, armed with a pair of slippers, a salwar suit and 300 rupees. So if you could just sort of explain this to us, what exactly happened? Yes, that is true. And uh, that's a long journey for me. So I left home when I was just 15. I had a major fight with my parents and as a teenager fight it was. Today I feel that maybe my parents were not so serious. My father was not so serious when he told me to leave the house. It was because I was a rebel. And, but I just decided that I will never go back because I didn't want to give up. Because I was a headstrong child. And then the journey started of, you know, me staying on a railway station, trying to struggle, uh, like trying to find my space to live, uh, fending for my food, the whole journey, you know, and then uh, landing up into a door-to-door -door marketing, door-to-door uh, -door sales girl uh, kind of a job where, uh, you know, I have to go and knock at almost 100 doors a day and the success rate on a door-to-door -door sales is just 2%. We, we used to sell just like two or three pieces a day. So with about 20 rupees commission, starting from there, doing numerous job and number of things, and today being owner of Rubats. When you say uh, a sales job, when you were contacting or knocking the doors of 100 people a day, is 100 like an overestimation or actually you were knocking on the doors of like 100 people a day? So that's so because we have, sorry yeah tell me no so we, we have to because see what happened in those days i'm sure you would remember an era where you know people could walk into a building with a bag in their hand and try to sell something right now because the success rate is so low because 90 percent of the people just slam the door on the faces they don't even give us a chance to speak so even if I have to do like a two or three pieces sale and earn like 20 rupees per piece, I have to go and knock like 100 doors, else I cannot do it. And you know, you said you, I mean, you had a, we all have fights with our parents and, but, but in the sense, when you were living on the railway station, etc., uh, did did your parents try to get in? I mean, this was the era of where there were no mobile phones, right? What What year are we talking about? Quite some time back, yeah, almost like I um like almost twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty four years. Ten to 10, so the yeah. late so the late nineties where the cell phone era had not started. So did your parents try to get in touch with you? Did you you of course I already know are extremely stubborn. Well, like you've already said. So, but they did they get try to get in touch with you? I don't know, maybe they did. They said they did, but they could not find me because I left from one end of Mumbai. I used to live in a place called Nala Supara, which is just a second station, like a second last station to Mumbai. And from there, I straight took a train to Bombay Central. So it wasn't possible for them to find me. But I mean, later on, when you sort of, you know, got in touch with them, etc., when you sort of got established, what they must have been through when you know you you sort of left. I mean the kind of the kind of tension, etc. And then when you came back with a with your success story, um, why the name uh, why the name Rubens accessories? So Rubens means ribbons in French. It stands for colors, smoothness, softness, and elegance, and okay. that is what my brand stands for. Okay, right. And uh, some, what, what was it like? I mean, staying in the, at the railway station and struggling like this, how did you, how did you manage? How did you survive? It's, it's kind of a typical Bollywood filmy story. I mean, you never know, maybe with the kind of content Netflix is coming out with the next thing, which we are going to see is some sort of a story, which is being or a documentary, which is made on you. So oh how, did you, how did you survive that? I was, I was like 
it was it, it was a tough time. See, what happens is when when you're at your lowest and when you don't have money, you see life to its extreme. And that is what was happening to me. So I was hardly getting food to eat. I used to hardly make like 20 rupees or 40 rupees a day. I used to survive on a vada pao, survive on sometimes on a milk packet because that used to cost me only 6 rupees and it used to give me a little bit of energy. So I would, there was no... I, I had nothing, so I would just cut a packet of a milk packet, like a half liter, and just have that for dinner or lunch. And I used to get just one meal a day. I remember that uh, uh, what I felt, one of the biggest achievement at that time was affording my three times meal. So, you know, that, was, that has been the journey. But then I realized at that age that I'll be able to survive through this if I work hard. So I had to work hard, I realized at the age of 15. Which is still the most, you know, this is something which I still believe that there is no substitute to hard work. You will have to burn your midnight oil. You will have to, you will have to give it your best. You have to be at your 100% almost every day. And that is what I've been doing for 24 years. And that is what has brought me here. So how did, uh, again, it's just difficult to hear all this, but still I'll move on. How did you uh, start uh, Ruben's Accessories? You know, start your own company. Um, obviously, now that I've sort of heard you, it must have been quite simple compared to living on the railway station, compared to other entrepreneur stories. So tell me, how did you how did you uh, start off the company? So I got married and then uh, I wanted to take, because I, I was working for so many years, I wanted to take a short break. And that was the time I decided to do a makeup course in Bombay. There I met a lot of models and you know, those, uh, fashion photographers and all. So some, one of them, like a few of them told me, why don't you go and participate in Mrs. India. At that time, Glad Rags Mrs. India was one of the biggest pageants. So, you know, all my friends told me, hey, you look so pretty and you're married. Why don't you go and... Uh, Participate. I'm like, okay, this sounds exciting. This is like other other part of the world, you know, other so like a dream for me, like you know, Mrs. India and all that. Then starting from where I come from. So I did that. I uh, so during that period, I noticed how you know the jewelry was like the most that, that was like the final finishing, the final touch. You know, we models would be ready with our attire, our makeup, our hair, and finally there'll be a stylist who comes with a whole box. And she'll give us some beautiful jewelry, depending on what attire we are wearing, and complete the whole look. So this thought stayed with me for quite some time. Uh, after that, I started my corporate merchandising company, wherein I used to deal with all the top corporates like Sun Miller, Pranarika, UB, Setmax, Sony, all of them. And here, I was interacting with all the marketing heads because I, because I started the merchandising for them. Now, this is where I was interacting with this marketing head, you know, understanding how branding works, what is branding, what is branding basically, that was like fascinating to me because, you know, I never got even a chance to complete my education because I left at 15. So this whole journey of, uh, you know, running that company for seven years, interacting with marketing heads and the love for jewelry, love for fashion I always had, but I could never afford it. Then the little exposure that I got in the fashion industry in 2014, I decided to, you know, just combine both the things. And then I decided that I will own a brand and I will start something of my own, which is very long term it's, and which should have a meaning. It should not be, okay, I'm working today and tomorrow whether it will exist or not, we don't know. So something like that is what my thought was. And then I noticed a lot of gap in jewelry. I realized that there were brands for almost everything. Even if today you want to go buy a slipper, there are 20 brands for it. You buy a jeans, there are 20 brands, t-shirts for everything. Jewelry was the only, only, uh, you know, product where there was no brand. Women was like practically struggling. They would buy something when they go to Bangkok. They would buy something when they go to Mumbai, Delhi, you know, Kolaba. So I just decided, I mean, I'm going to bring the best of jewelry under one roof and make it like super affordable and super reachable. And that's how I started. Great, great. Now to, to sort of wrap up in 30 seconds, tell me what is, what does, uh, personally to you, what does Women's Day mean? A celebration 
of uh, being a woman. And uh, see, Women's Day, I feel for a, for a very long time, women were always neglected, you know, they were not given the chance that they deserve, they were not given the opportunities that they deserve. So it is just that one day which makes them feel special and which, which tells them that yesterday, it, I knew this should happen every day, you know, and it, now the things are changing and yes, women are given that opportunity. But when this whole thing started, it was all about that, is what I feel. <laughs> no, very, very well said. Uh, a lot of truth in what you said. And um, I hope a lot of people see this video. It's quite an, uh, quite an incredible story. I think that's the, that's the word I'd like to use. All the best for the future. And uh, take care. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.